Welcome to Mise on Game, a study of cinematic language in video games. Today's subject, 1998's The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. By looking into a key development in the game's narrative, the first encounter between protagonist Link and antagonist Ganondorf, we can appreciate how the simple use of shot compositions, character blocking, and simple actions taken by each of the characters all come together to convey an exciting moment. We start with an extreme wide shot that pans left across the sky over Hyrule Field. There's no music here. Instead, our soundtrack is the calm before a literal storm. As the camera settles in front of the sealed entrance gate, a simple but important technique to notice is how the camera is angled low on Castletown. It makes the structure look large and imposing, and it communicates that this clearly isn't the Castletown you were excited to enter the first time you hiked across Hyrule Field. As the drawbridge slowly lowers, we pull back, rushing over the shoulder of Link as he stands alone in front of the gates. Notice how Link is positioned to appear smaller than he normally would. Camera positioning and character blocking are going to be a running element throughout this cutscene. Even lower and slightly askew, the camera now catches a white horse that runs out of frame from right to left. Hard cut to Link, who darts out of harm's way. The cuts between shots are becoming quicker, emphasizing urgency. Our next shot, a close-up, shows that Princess Zelda and Impa are riding the horse. In one of the more dynamic shots of the cutscene, Zelda sits up and hurls something back towards Link. The camera pans out and over the field while continuing to keep pace with the speeding horse. The positioning of Zelda in the moving foreground creates an interesting effect as it makes her effort to throw the object in her hand towards the constantly receding castle look impossible. Whatever Zelda threw managed to land in the waters in a flat, static shot of the castle town moat. Cinematically, it's a bit boring, but it's a brief shot meant to get information across to the player. Link now stands in the right foreground of the frame, with Hyrule Field stretching out in front of him, a complimentary piece of framing to the shot of Zelda throwing her item. However, this shot actually has much more to it, as the camera swoops low, circling around Link as he turns in reaction to something behind him. As Link finishes pivoting, he's now in the left foreground, looking up with the audience at Ganondorf. Music scores a low-angle shot that comes up onto Ganondorf as he stares off frame. We finally stop with the man framed in close-up, and with this, we get our first piece of dialogue. Maintaining our close-up, Ganondorf looks down, establishing an eye line with Link based on where we last saw the boy standing in frame. For the first time in the sequence, the action is now framed at a high angle, and the usage here is important. With Ganondorf dominating the right side of the frame, the high angle camera helps to make Link look small and absolutely helpless. Everything about this composition tells us we've just encountered one bad dude. Link begins to back up hesitantly, leading to a cut wherein Link takes up the left side of the frame. And although he is emphasized in the foreground, he does not rule the space the way the writer did in the previous shot, as his body language is defensive. Link finally draws his sword and shield. This act of defiance earns a chuckle as we come up to a medium shot. With a flash, we're now behind Link, watching him get thrown back from the impact. As he sits up, we rush in towards his assailant. Framed dead center and looking large, terrifying, and powerful, Ganondorf taunts Link. Ganondorf rouses his steed and rushes out of frame. We watch our final glimpse of Ganondorf from a distance, hovering over the moat, right around where Zelda's item fell. As Ganondorf speeds off, we whip around, to the left, circling by Link as he picks himself up. This dynamic camera movement serves an interesting purpose, as the camera's path from over the moat to right in front of it reminds the gaming audience that something awaits them within the water. Link continues to watch Ganondorf depart in a medium shot that slowly zooms in on the boy's face, with Ganondorf's musical motif beginning to fade down. Our cutscene finally ends with a contemplative close-up before we dissolve out over a white frame. In just 2 minutes and 24 seconds, depending on how quick you cycle through the game's dialogue, we've been delivered a simply constructed but incredibly insightful introduction to one of gaming's most important characters, Ganondorf. We understand his impact on Hyrule, his ambitions and goals, and his relationship to Princess Zelda and Link. In addition, the game has laid the narrative seeds that will birth the next movement of the story. Will Zelda escape and live to see another day? Can the seemingly all-powerful Ganondorf be stopped? Can Link stand up to this tyrant that so easily brushed our hero aside? The answers are out there, but first, we need to figure out what's in that moat. 